Hey, my name is Philip Ozaki. I'm from here. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I currently live in San Francisco, but I'm moving to Pittsburgh. Um, I'm going to tell my coming out story. <clears throat> and when I came out to my parents, it was in the backseat of my car, and I said, Mom, Dad, I'm gay. And my dad looked at me in his rear rear mirror, and he just said, Son, I know. So for me, it was pretty easy to come out to my parents. They were very accepting. They're musicians. And it was really my little brother that I had a lot of trouble coming out to. I had come out to everyone else in my family and to most of my friends. And it was just my little brother who was at the time in eighth grade in a small private Christian school, a very pretty conservative school. And I had talked to my parents about coming out to him. And they didn't want me to because they didn't want him to get bullied because he would have a gay brother. And I, don't, I, I didn't disagree with that at the time, but I did thought, think it was really important to give him a counter story to what his school was teaching him about gay people. And that counter story would be that your brother is gay and he's a perfectly fine and reasonable person. <clears throat> so I decided to do it after we got some ice cream on a nice sunny day in Chicago. Um, I just bought him some ice cream and then we were in the car together and I just said, James, I need to tell you something. I'm gay. And we were driving. And he, it was really awkward. He, said, he told me it was awkward. He looked like he was trying to get out of the car, out of the window. We didn't really talk the whole rest of the ride until we got home. And <clears throat> we didn't really talk at all after that. I kind of ran away from home to my brother's place that night because I knew my parents would be mad at me because they told me not to come out to him. <clears throat> and so there was this tension every time I'd, come, I'd, I'd be home. And there was a tension between me and my brother. And one time I was telling him to do something just like, hey, pick up your stuff or something like that. And then I started walking up the stairs. And <clears throat> he told me, why should I listen to you, you faggot? And I said, what? <clears throat> and he said, you're a faggot. I'm not going to listen to you. And I, I, don't, I don't know what happened to me at that point, but I just got so enraged that he had said that. And at the time, I, I must have been like 22. And he must have been, no, I was 20. And he was, he must have been like 13. And I was so enraged, I just started beating him up, just punching the guy. And, <clears throat> and then he had a bloody nose, and my dad and mom walked into the, like, ran into the room. He's like, they were like, what's going on? And my dad, like, pulled me aside, and he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, your son just called me a faggot. And my dad told me, well, Phil, this is just kid stuff. And, you know, I'd never really had a discussion with my parents about, about my life or about being gay. Um, but I, I knew that I didn't, that's not what I wanted my dad to think that this meant to me. So, um, you know, I know a lot about my family history. My grandparents were in uh, Japanese-American concentration camps that the U.S. government put 120,000 Japanese people in the camps um, at, during World War II. And then when my dad was growing up, it was very common that kids on the playground would call my dad a Jap and be like, they would they'd just be playing good guy, bad guy. He, my dad would automatically be the bad guy because he was a Jap. And that was just kid shit, right? Like what my dad said. <clears throat> so I brought this up to my dad, and I was like, Dad, you need to be sticking up for me. Your son just called me a faggot, and you need to tell him to stop. And he still disagreed with me until I told him, well, Dad, when they were calling you a Jap back in high school, was that okay? Was that just kid shit? My dad just pondered for a little bit. He doesn't usually do that. And he just said, James, it's not okay for you to call your brother a faggot. And the rest of that day went pretty okay. Um, no, I thought yet. So my dad, then we just sat down as a family and my, I asked my parents their views on gay marriage. I actually never asked them this. I just assumed that they'd be really supportive and they really were. And I thought it was really great that my brother could hit for this. And now that I think about it now, I mean, I got what I wanted. I wanted my brother to have a counter-narrative to what he was learning in school. Um, you know, just fast forward a, a few years, and 
you know, me and my brother have a really good relationship. I'm really glad I came out to him. I'm really glad he's accepting of me. And um, and I, I knew he really cared for me when he bought me this superhero book about a guy who had to conceal his superhero identity, but he was also gay. So that's the hardest person I've ever had to come out to, and I'm glad it went off.